I think what we saw this quarter was uh, a very nice pickup in our fee-based revenues. So we've been investing in building out our capabilities. We've done a couple of acquisitions, and we're getting a lot of traction there. So there's some pressure uh, given the downward movement in rates on your net interest income. I think we managed that well, plus we passed the baton and had our fees kick in, so we still saw some decent revenue growth, good expense control, clean credit book. The other thing that we did today is we announced another one of our uh, top programs, Tapping Our Potential, where we're going to put a lot of effort into transforming how we're running the bank. Uh, it's supposed to deliver $300 million in benefits over the next couple of years, so I think the market liked that as well. Bruce, uh, in terms of the net interest income, is there less flexibility uh, if we do see rate cuts for you to offset it with deposit rate adjustments because on the way up, it's not like deposit rates soared? Yeah, I think that's the, that's the challenge. If you look at banks' net interest margins, they were typically down uh, mid-single digits to high single digits. Uh, ours was on the light side of that, four basis points. We got after it early and started to look at where could we take some pricing actions on deposits. We knew uh, LIBOR was coming down, so our asset yields were going to come down. Uh, and we did a good job. Our interest-bearing deposit costs were only up three basis points this quarter. The challenge will be, as the Fed moves into its cut cycle, is you've got to be reasonably aggressive uh, in bringing down those deposit rates. I do think all banks are going to be after doing that. So um, I think we'll see how, how fast we can go. There'll be a competitive dynamic to that. But banks are going to be really working that equation hard. Bruce, you said that credit was clean in the quarter. What are you seeing going forward for credit for both consumers and businesses? As it seems in some cases, we have two very separate camps where the consumer feels strong, but business executives are very unsure about this current environment. Yeah, I think uh, the consumer really is in good shape. Uh, unemployment is low. Real wages are going up. Uh, confidence is high. And so we're seeing consumers willing to take down revolving credit and uh, borrow money and, uh, and look to invest in their future. So that's all been really good. Uh, lower rates cause refinancing of mortgages and other price-sensitive borrowings like student loans. Uh, so I think you're going to continue to see good loan demand on the consumer side. And you really don't see any signs of migrations into delinquency buckets. Uh, on the commercial side as well, there's really not a, a big increase in any particular industry segment or any movement up in criticized assets or non-performing assets. And so usually if a recession were coming, you would start to see some migration either on the consumer side or on the commercial side. We're not seeing that. So we think we have some nice running room here before we end up uh, seeing a recession. Bruce, I want to ask you a question. This is Jim LeCamp. You mentioned the commercial side. That's one of the areas I'm a little concerned about because the cap rates for commercial real estate are back down at or below levels they were before the financial crisis. How much growth can we get out of that space from here, given where cap rates are? Well, I, I think the market uh, is in a decent amount of equilibrium now. I think the uh, investors and developers are uh, circumspect. They're just looking to, to start and initiate uh, the highest quality projects. And I think banks are looking uh, to really just back their best quality uh, borrowers and longstanding relationships. And so I don't see uh, a, a real uh, uh, kind of uh, risk in that marketplace at this point. Anything that's getting done more speculative tends to get financed away from the banks. And so more uh, private equity funds or other uh, debt funds would be taking on that risk. But I think banks are being fairly disciplined. Bruce, uh, earlier in the week, we heard from both Brian, Brian Moynihan and Jamie Dimon about the state of the uh, U.S. economy. Let's take a listen. The core thing is the United States economy is growing. Is it growing slower than it grow, grew last year? Actually, not so far reportedly, but expected to slow down because the first quarter is basically equivalent to last year. And the consumer is driving that. The consumer in the United States is doing fine. Business sentiment is a little bit worse, mostly probably driven by the trade war. You know, I wouldn't get too pessimistic yet. And you know, obviously the Fed will react to, you know, what they, the data they see. And you know, I would say it's more important what's going on than just what the Fed does. If the Fed's cutting rates because we're going to recession, that's not a good rate cut. If the Fed actually raises rates one day because they're booming, that's not so bad. Bruce, they're both pretty optimistic uh, about the economy, but particularly about the consumer. Is the data you're seeing uh, in line with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, I, and I do think, you know, the Fed has all the data. Uh, there's certainly a lot of speculation about what they'll do next week. Um, I personally think that uh, it's likely that they'll cut, but I 
I'd say it's 25, not 50. 